Welcome back to Bascara Labs, where we turn complex IT setups into clear, step-by-step -step stories. Today, we're talking about a key part of AWS security, giving private servers safe internet access without ever exposing them to direct attacks. In AWS, a private subnet is like a locked vault. Your resources are secure, invisible to the internet. But sometimes, those servers still need to go online maybe to download updates, pull code from a repo, or connect to APIs. If we just give them a public IP, we also give hackers a way in. And that's where the NAT gateway comes in. Think of it as a one-way door with a guard. Your private instances can step out to the internet, but no one can walk in from the outside. Outbound only, inbound blocked. We begin by creating a virtual private cloud or VPC. Think of it as a private, isolated data center inside AWS. We choose a CIDR block, in this case 12.0.0.0 slash 16, giving us enough address space for both public and private resources. Next, we divide our network into subnets. The public subnet will host resources that can connect to and be reached from the Internet. The private subnet will be restricted. It won't accept direct inbound connections from the Internet, making it much harder for attackers to even see that it exists. For the public subnet to communicate with the internet, we need an internet gateway. We create it, attach it to our VPC, and now we have an official doorway to the outside world, but only for resources that are allowed to use it. Now that our VPC and subnets are ready, it's time to guide the traffic. We create two route tables, one for the public subnet and one for the private subnet. First, we associate the public route table with the public subnet. Inside this table, we add a default route, 0.0.0.0, .0 meaning all destinations, and point it to our internet gateway. This tells the public subnet exactly how to reach the outside world. Then we take the private route table and associate it with the private subnet. At this stage, we don't add any internet route, keeping the private subnet fully isolated at least until our NAT gateway arrives later in the story. With the network in place, it's time to put it to the test. We launch two Windows EC2 instances, our test machines. The first one goes into the public subnet. It's assigned a public IP address automatically, meaning it can talk to the internet directly through the internet gateway. This will be our visible server, one that can be reached from the outside if the right security rules are in place. The second instance goes into the private subnet. This one has no public IP, no direct internet access, and no route to the outside world. From the perspective of the internet, this machine doesn't even exist. It's completely hidden behind our VPC's walls. By comparing the two, we'll clearly see how connectivity works differently between public and private subnets.
let's test our setup. I start by connecting to the public EC2 instance using the Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP. From the AWS console, I select my public instance, click Connect, and choose the RDP Client option. First, I download the Remote Desktop file. This file contains the connection settings, including the public IP address of the instance, ready to open in the RDP client. Next, I click Get Password. AWS prompts me to upload the key pair file that I already have. Once I upload it, AWS decrypts and reveals the administrator password. With that done, I open the downloaded RDP file, enter the username administrator, and paste the password we just decrypted. And now I'm inside the public EC2 instance. I open the browser, head to google.com, and it works perfectly thanks to the internet gateway. Now it's time to test the private one. Since the private EC2 has no public IP, I can't connect to it directly from my computer. Instead, I use the public EC2 as a jump host. From here, I open the RDP client again, but this time I use the private IP address of the private EC2 instance. I enter the username administrator and the password I've already retrieved for the private EC2 in the same way, using the get password option in the AWS console with its key pair file. Once connected, I'm inside the private EC2. I open the browser and try to access google.com, but nothing loads, no internet connection at all, and that's exactly by design. The private subnet has no route to the outside world yet, keeping this machine completely hidden and isolated. Now we introduce the NAT gateway, the key to giving our private instances safe, controlled internet access. Go to NAT gateways and click Create NAT Gateway. Choose the public subnet. Allocate and assign a new elastic IP. Click Create NAT Gateway. This acts as a secure middleman. Private instances can go out to the internet but no one can connect back in. Wait until the NAT gateway status shows available. This ensures it's ready to handle traffic. Then, open the private subnet's route table. Click Edit Routes. Add destination 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. Set the target to the NAT gateway. Save changes. Now all internet bound traffic from the private subnet will flow through the NAT gateway. Back on the private EC2, I open the browser and try google.com again, and this time, it works. The instance can now download updates, connect to APIs, and fetch packages from the internet, all without exposing itself to inbound traffic. And that's it! 
we've built a secure AWS network with public and private subnets, plus a NAT gateway that protects private resources while still giving them outbound access. This is a solid foundation for secure, scalable cloud deployments. If you found this useful, hit subscribe and join us at Boggs Carroll Labs for more security-focused AWS lessons. Until next time, stay secure and keep building.